Well, hello, welcome again to a reading through of Iliad book 22, and I got up to line 405. So, the beginning of this book, as I mentioned earlier, begins with three speeches, uh, one from Priam, one from uh, Hecabe, and then a sort of soliloquy from Hector, and the structure of the book is then after the the flight and the death scenes, we now have a repeat of this, except now we have a speech again from um, the, the father, and um, then we get a speech from the mother, Hecabe, and then in place of the speech from Hector, because he's now dead, we get a speech from his wife, Andromache, and that closes off essentially the book. So starting from 405, host two men, Kekoni tok hare hapan. And thus all of his head, and that's the two for our two, literally was dusted, was covered with dust. Konis is the word for dust, this is just a verb form from that. This will be a, a pluperfect passive here. Uh, he de nu mete, but his mother then, this is that nu, it's a shortened form of nun, which is a shortened form of noon, often just just moves the um, the story on a little bit, you can translate it as then I suppose. His mother then tile, tore, or plucked, to tore out her comane, her hair, she plucked out her hair, tore out her hair. The apot is a preverb with the ripto here. And she hurled away, uh, or hurled off, her liparane, her shiny caluptrane. This is a veil. It's connected with calupto to hide, because the veil covers the face. Uh, Tear lossy, far away. So she threw it far away. And uh, having looked upon her son, Kokuo is to cry lament, usually only used of women, kokuo, and you get various nouns from this as well, that means to scream out, to cry lament, and mala very greatly. So she cried out screams of lament very greatly when she looked upon her son. Oi moksen, this is from that verb um, formed from the sound oimoi, oimoi is a a cry of a piteous cry of lament and the Greeks as typical fashion formed a verb from it and uh, his dear father uh, well screamed Eleana uh, is adverbial piteously and the host or the people round about uh, this is again adverbial you often get amphide in an adverbial sense in Homer a conto were, this is a passive here, they were held down by kokuto, this is connected with that verb we had up here, um, it means crying lament, so they were held down by lamentation and by another noun similar to the, um, the um, oimoi, verb from oimoi, uh, and um, lament about the city. So we get a repeat of the two verbs up here, and then we get the two corresponding nouns here, which is quite clever. So just to do that bit again quickly. So his father, his dear father, was, um, uh, well, was screaming piteously, and the host all around were held down by uh, lament and um, by screaming up and down the city. To de malis de ar ein eleng en alinkion hos a. This is a very interesting little construction here, which I've not seen that much. In fact, I can't recall having seen it. I'm sure it's there somewhere else in Homer, but it's um uh, the the verb here is from the verb to be, uh, and it's used sort of impersonally here. I think so. It was then very much like to this, hose a, as if. 
So in other words, the situation was very much as though all of Ilium, this is beetling Ilium, uh, literally with brows, so it's set on the brow of a hill, so you could say with, um, with its ridges. Uh, so it was as if all of Ilium, all of beetling Ilium, smukhoitov, um, smuko is to smolder, was smoldering, was burning, was smoldering with fire, cat akres. Well, perhaps from the top down, um, so from top to bottom. La on min ra geronta mogis ekon askalonta. And the people, now we get a min, and the de is down here. So the people with difficulty, uh, ekon for akon, they were restraining the old man, they were holding him back, restraining the, uh, the old man who was askalonta. The verb is formed from alpha privative. The sk is from that echo root again from skein. It means unable to hold himself, and unable to control himself. So um, vexed or distressed, it's often translated as. Uh, so they, the, the host, the people um, with difficulty were holding down then the old man who was distressed or perhaps unable to control himself, which would be appropriate here. Um, he, he desiring, it's that memar root again, he desiring to go out from the gates, from the Dardanian gates. Uh, and he, Kulin uh, Dominos, cognate with our word cylinder, uh, he was rolling himself in the dung, and he was uh, beseeching everyone, cognate with our word litany. So he was he was uh, begging everyone. Uh, on a Mazdan, calling each man, and the uh, the X goes with the verb, I think. So calling out loudly each man, calling him by name. Uh, it's slightly repetitive, but it's meant to be very emphatic here. Calling him out by name. Skes uh, there, Philoi. Well, it means, this is middle, I think. It's, it's hold yourselves back, restrain yourselves. In other words, let me be, my friends, and allow me, so although I, al although you care about me, so although you're doing this out of care, uh, allow me alone, going out from the city, he thigh, there's an alpha iota elided here, to go to the ships of the Achaeans. I will, I would, I think this is subjunctive, I would beseech this man who is at Tastalon, who is outrageous, and Obrimal Ergon, a worker of monstrous deeds. So I will beg him if, perhaps, if, if in perhaps in, or in some way, if perchance, um, he might have respect for my, uh, literally my age, and he might pity Geras, my old age. So you could say he will have respect for my longevity and have pity upon my old age. So these are subjunctives here. This without a lengthening vowel, but this is a subjunctive here. Kaide nu to gepate toyozdi tetuktai. Perfect from tuko, but often just used in the sense of like the verb to be. So, and it's something like Surely, with the ge here, surely uh, his father, the father for him, uh, we'll just say is here, is such a one, that is like me, he's an old man. But surely his, his father is such as, understand as I am. And then he names the father, Peleus, Hosmin Etikti, who bore him and reared him, 
to be a pain, a misery, a source of grief uh, to the Trojans, Troci. Malis de demoi peripantan algia ethake, for he has uh, placed, especially for me, beyond everyone else, he has placed griefs. So he has placed griefs especially for me, more than anyone else. Then we get an explanatory gar. For he has killed so many sons for me. Tele Thaontas, literally in, perhaps in the pride of life, uh, blooming. The verb here is Tele Thao, meaning to bloom. And so we might say in the, the prime of their life, so for he has in, for he has killed uh, so many of my sons in the prime of their life, and although vexed, in other words, although sad at losing all these sons, I lament not so much for all of them as for one man, Hector. And uh, grief for him. So a sharp grief or painful grief for him, that's the who here, uh, Cat Oisetai from Catafero will lead me into, understand, the house of Hades. And Homer cleverly, which we can't do in English, Homer cleverly leaves the name to the next line with enchantment. It's very beautifully done. Hose Ophelin would that understand he and an infinitive it's probably a future infinitive so would that he were about to die in my arms toe is that toe meaning therefore or then in in that case um, we would um, we would be satisfied the two of us weeping and lamenting understand I and his mother, who bore him, dus amoros, uh, ill-fated, she and I myself. So the the mother and the, the mate there and the aide ego autos go together, but it's all cleverly constructed here. So therefore, we his mother, who bore him so ill-fated, and me myself, the two of us would be satisfied, weeping and lamenting. From Muramai. And thus he spoke, uh, weeping or crying, and the citizens, epi, so, uh, wailed, epi, possibly here in addition, so as well. So the citizens wailed in addition, or as well then. So that was the speech of Priam. And now the camera turns to Hecabe, the mother, and she's going to have a fairly short speech. Uh, so Hecabe, ex Erica, uh, she made a beginning. This is really almost a religious word here, um, that you uh, do something at um, in a kind of funeral. So uh, she made a beginning of the um, the um, Hardinos allowed, I think it's allowed or wild lamentation for the Trojan women. And she says, My son, Ego Dele, uh, woe is me, so um, poor me, my son, Tinu Bayamai. Bayamai is a funny form here. It's probably a subjunctive formed from the bios root. And then we get a lengthened um, main vowel here. Uh, so why then am I alive? Why then do I live having suffered such terrible things? So, O oh my child, wretched am I. Why do I live having suffered such terrible things? and the genitive absolute, you having died. 
So we get the compound apothenase scale here. This is a perfect participle here. Normally in Homer you just get the nasco, but apothenasco is more common in later Greek, but here it is in Homer as well, with you having died. You who, um, pel eschio is iterative, pelomai is that another one of these verbs with the sense of, you know, translated just to be, so, and it's iterative, so you were continually, you uh, kole, can mean a prayer, but it can also mean a boast or glory. So day and night, you were continually my glory, the glory for me, kataastu, up and down the city. Onea, a benefit, it's connected with um, oninami. So a benefit or a boon to all the Trojan men and Trojan women, kataptolin, up and down the city. Nice ver variatio here, kataastu and kataptolin. No real difference between the two, it's just nice variation. Hoi seth there on hos de dechat. Now this verb appears very various places in Homer. It's probably, the etymology is debated, but it's probably connected with date numi in the sense of to point out uh, also, it can mean to welcome, um, and that's probably what it is here. So, uh, who welcomed you like a god, or perhaps almost pointed you out like a god, but possibly just welcome, I think it's generally translated, welcomed you like a god. Ega kai spisi mala mega kudos i ace there, zoos i own. So when, for indeed, when you were alive, you were also a very great um, glory, this is the second person from the verb to be, past tense, so you were, um, so when being alive, uh, you were for them also a very great glory. Now, moreover, death and Moira and fate, King Kane, literally have found you or have come upon you. So, but now, it's almost as it is, but now in, in our, now in fact, death and fate have come upon you. And that is the end of this section from Book 22.